Our next speaker is Brian Jones, and he's from the Environment and Development Trust. He's from Namibia. It is talks on community-based approach to maintaining wildlife quarters in the Zambezi region with um, your other, I'll let you introduce your other. Okay, thanks. So do I need the microphone? Can everybody hear me? Do you need it for recording purposes? No, no. So I'm free of the microphone, but I need the clicker. Thank you. Do you want to turn it off then? And So this, this actually, although it seems like quite a different presentation, it has a lot of uh, common themes and issues with some of the previous presentations about land use, about who manages the land, the wildlife on the land, and so on. And it's looking at the Zambezi region in Namibia. Um, it's work that I've been doing as a consultant for the NGO Integrated Rural Development and Nature Conservation with support from WWF uh, with funding uh, for this work. And the Zambezi region in Namibia it falls within the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, which includes Angola, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, um, protected areas, game management areas, community conserved areas. And here is the Zambezi region, right at the heart of Kaza. One of the aims of Kaza is to uh, facilitate the movement, the free movement of wildlife across international boundaries between protected areas. Um, and, but in between the protected areas is a lot of community land. Uh, some, some of these areas are community conserved, as I said, but a lot of it is also open communal land. Also, sorry, the protected areas um, mostly have open borders. There, there are no fences around most of these protected areas, so wildlife can move freely. Now, Kaza takes a sort of top-down approach to its planning. It's decided that there should be wildlife dispersal areas, where the areas and it wants to establish wildlife corridors. Now, in the Zambezi region, there are corridors here of wildlife dispersal areas that Kaza wants to develop um, from Botswana through Namibian conservancies and communal land into Zambia, um, again from Namibia through into the Sioma and Gwezi National Park in Zambia, um, between Chobe National Park in Botswana and through to Zambia, Angola, and then here along the Kwando River, uh, through conservancies, Madumu National Park, through communal land, into Sioma and Gwezi. However, within the Zambezi region, we've been able to identify a lot of micro wildlife corridors. And the micro corridors are the, the purple areas here. Now, They've been identified in a number of different ways. Conservancies themselves, I think you've heard about conservancies from some of the opening speakers. People are familiar when I talk about a conservancy in the media. Right. So the, the conservancies have done their own land use planning and they have identified where their wildlife corridors are. Through local knowledge of where the wildlife moves. Um, they've gone and GPS the boundaries of these corridors and we have quite a clear picture of the micro corridors. We're not entirely sure how some of them actually link up. Our elephants, for instance, coming here from Chobe National Park in Botswana, moving through these corridors here, ending up here. According to local people, they're saying yes. 
So elephants in particular will move through here, across open communal land, into this conservancy, through these corridors, into Zambia, crossing international boundaries. So, as I say, the conservancies have done their own land use planning. The Zoti Conservancy has identified its own corridors, three of them across the main road. Most of the mapping has been done along the roadways. But the wild, the elephants in particular, sometimes buffalo and lion, are coming here from uh, Botswana, coming through the Nkasa Rupara National Park in Namibia, also from Botswana, up into the Madumu National Park up here, and then moving on. So the conservancies themselves have zoned their land and have included their wildlife corridors. But what we're seeing is a number of challenges to maintaining those corridors. And these include a, a policy and approach in Namibia of the registration of customary land and community members are registering their customary land rights um, in wildlife corridors. Growing human population obviously leads to pressures for more land. Some people are moving into wildlife corridors without the permission of the traditional authority. In Namibia, you can't be allocated land in rural areas on communal land without the permission of the TA, but that, that is sometimes happening. Then, ribbon development along the roads is taking place where water points are put in, uh, schools, clinics, and, and so on, and people want access to transport. So, okay, I just want to, yeah, this, this just gives an idea of what's happening with the uh, registration of these customary land rights, where these, these are units where people have registered their rights within corridors in Zoti Conservancy. You can see here in this one uh, corridor here how around, very much around the corridor, even in the corridor, um, starting to, to fill up with, with, this, with registered land rights, which probably would lead to settlement, uh, the development of fields, the fencing of fields and so on, which would start to um, block the corridor, which would also then cause more human wildlife conflict and so on. This is the, another, the, the third corridor in, in Zoti, quite a bit more space existing when this was, uh, this mapping was done, um, which is a couple of years ago now. So what we were looking at was how to help the conservancies actually implement their own land use planning and zonation, in particular, how to help them to maintain their designated corridors. And we've been developing, and this is an ongoing sort of, um, work in progress, developing a methodology for working with the communities. Some of the, the key um, parts of the methodology have been uh, meeting with the um, conservancy management committees, the game guards, the traditional leaders, for them to identify what they see as the, the main challenges in maintaining those corridors. Working with the um, traditional leaders, the headmen, the indunas, um, on the importance of the corridors and importance of their role because they allocate land. And then uh, holding village meetings to inform residents of conservancy zonation. Um, then we carried out research looking at attitudes to wildlife, to corridors, um, the people claiming customary rights and so on. And would people be willing not to, under what conditions would people be willing not to settle in a corridor? And this research, the results of the research was fed back to the um, uh, conservancy committees and the uh, traditional leaders. And from there, then we helped them to, to develop, or we facilitated the development of conservancy plans and rules for maintaining the corridors, and then holding discussions at village level. 
And what we've seen is some conditions emerging under which people would be willing to move um, if they could get other land, if they had alternative water, if someone was to pay for the construction of new homes, kraals and so on. It was also very clear that the conservancies themselves were not establishing corridors. And, you know, when CASA is talking about its corridors and WTAs, it's talking about establishing corridors. These are wildlife corridors that where the wildlife has been moving for many years and moving through these areas. And so the issue is not so much establishing corridors, but helping communities to maintain them. And there's been a general willingness to maintain the corridors and good commitment, particularly from the traditional leaders. We've had the mapping of the land rights in corridors, and we've now had three conservancies who have developed their plans and rules for securing corridors, and these have been approved now by their annual general meetings. This gives an idea of the sort of rules that are coming out from Sobby Conservancy, for example. Um, no new settlements allowed in the corridor, no new crop fields allowed, um, no livestock grazing in the wildlife corridor. Now, when I was discussing this with Sobby, I said, but hang on guys, you, you're, if, you, if I look at your zonation plan, you've got so many wildlife areas and very little land for grazing. Why are you saying no livestock grazing in the corridor? I said, no, if we allowed grazing, People will start moving in, start to settle, etc., etc. Um, then, amongst the actions, the community game guards would be monitoring activities in the corridor, and then the traditional leaders would be expected to take action um, against people who are illegal settlers. So, and these are the rules and the action uh, actions that were coming out from the conservancy themselves. And I think what, what's also important here is that the conservancies are reinvesting money, time, effort and so on in conservation. And here in Sobe in particular um, into conservation of this corridor. So as I said it's a work in progress. We're looking at a number of next steps. Uh, one option for the conservancy is to gain more control over the corridors and prevent further um, registration of customary land rights would be to take out a lease over the corridor. And that, that would really help to secure it. And then if there is a lease over the corridor and there's more control, then we could explore some form of payment for ecosystem services as compensation for people not taking up land in the corridor for the conservancy, maintaining the corridor, and so on. Then we have there are a number of different projects working within these conservancies, and we're bringing together sustainable livestock management, conservation agriculture, um, human wildlife conflict management, and even fish reserves. So where these corridors are crossing rivers, um, into, say, Botswana, that um, they would be ideal areas also for fish reserves on the river. And then further exploration of the impacts of um, registration of customary land rights on, on the commonage, because the commonage is used for grazing and by wildlife. And, if, and what we're hearing is that the registration of customary rights is leading to people saying, go, oh, sorry, this is my land. In the past, you might have grazed your livestock on my land, but now you can no longer do that. So, when we look at these grand conservation ideas of um, transfrontier conservation areas, and we see the lines on the map and so on, we actually need a bit more than that. We need some action on the ground with the people who use the land, who are uh, essentially managing the wildlife, whether positively or negatively. And so, through the ground observations and information from communities, 
We've been able to see where at the micro level the wildlife is actually moving and been able to assist the communities to think about, okay, what are our challenges and what can we do about those challenges? And really the bottom-up approach is based on community knowledge and supporting the communities to manage their own areas should provide a strong foundation for securing the wildlife corridors. And I think what's important here, again linking to some to the previous presentations, the well, what's the motivation? Why are these communities saying we want to maintain wildlife corridors? One reason, because they get income from wildlife. One of the forms of income is trophy hunting. In the Sobi Conservancy, the one in Duna, the main in Duna um, for the area, said to me when we first started having these discussions, um, we, the elephants move through the corridor, we have trophy hunting in the corridor, that is our only form of income from the wildlife, so we help to maintain the corridor. But again, like the essentially white rhino farmers that we were hearing about, people are saying that we want the wildlife. And we also want to keep the wildlife, we don't want to see the elephants disappear. And yeah, this corridor is where the elephants always move, it's the way the elephants go and we want to maintain that for the elephants. And there are some elephants, sorry that's a very poor Photos taken on a um, cell phone. It was um, sent to me by a colleague, Simon Mays, and it's showing some elephants in the Sobi Wildlife Corridor crossing the main road. Um, I'm actually not sure what the direction is. They're either coming from Sobi Conservancy and going to Zambia or coming from Zambia into the Conservancy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 